Welcome back. If you decided you looked at today's games and you went, ah, it's just five games on, I'll skip it, you missed some interesting, 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 interesting hockey. Um, and a good thing I'm here to recap it, and there's highlight reel stuff all over the internet. Of course, I, I can't show highlights. I like monetizing my channel and not getting copyright strikes. So that's why I don't use highlights. That's why I do notes the way that I do. At any rate, we're going to start things off talking about the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Tampa Bay Lightning. Is Vasilevsky versus Wall in this one. Uh, good early back and forth. No brawling. And I, that's only noteworthy because of what happened over here. The bonkers craziness that was the beginning of this game. Uh, Leafs press at three minutes. Reeves throwing hits, getting some cheers from the crowd. He might have been one of the better Leafs tonight. Really and genuinely uh, had a pretty good game. Uh, the Leafs draw a power play. There's an early clear. Tavares fires one wide. They cycle and then Tavares with a near miss. Uh, it's killed off, and again, still no brawls. Just noteworthy. Uh, shots are 3-0 Toronto at 6.5 minutes. The Leafs press at 9.5 minutes. They're kept to the outside. Tampa Bay then draws a power play, or they would have, except they score during the delayed call. It's Hedman from Kucherov and Hagel at 10.03. He roofs it past a screen, and that was the first shot on net for Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay felt that the first period they played in this game, worst first period they've had in weeks. Uh, so, yeah, during the delayed call, roofed past the screen. Uh, too many Leafs on the ice. The Bolts get a power play. That's killed off. That's the Leafs' 15th kill in a row, technically. Technically, because when they score during a delayed call, if the goalie gets off and it's a 6-on-5, I still think there should be some way of denoting that it's during a delayed call. I think the NHL needs to bring that in and have that as a stat. Uh, so Matthews has a rush that's defended. The Bolts press with 5.5 minutes left. With 3.35 left, Tampa Bay goes back to the power play, so I change markers. Uh, early cycle is cleared again. That power play is killed off. With 103 left, the Leafs get a power play and they score on it. At 19 minutes, it's Matthews with a one-timer off of a face-off win. Riley and Tavares with the assist there. That is the 63rd game of the or 63rd goal of the season for Austin Matthews. Matthews then has a rush chance that's saved. So it's 1-1 after one, and it felt like hey, the Leafs might have might have some momentum. Second period, there's an early power play for the Leafs. Tampa Bay clears. The Leafs end up going offside, trying to get back in. There's a shorthanded chance that's held by Wool. That's killed off. And then at 254 point, Barry's one and close as Tampa Bay has some pressure. Kucherov and Duclair with the assists. Uh, Domi then has a shot that's kicked aside. The Leafs get some pressure after that. There's more pressure by Toronto five and a half minutes in. Near miss for Radish as the Bolts press. The shots are six to five Tampa at seven minutes. Domi to Matthews near miss. And then... On a two-on-one rush, Stamkos opts to go five-hole, and he gets it. Hagel and Flurry with the assists at eight minutes and 48 seconds. McCabe then has a screenshot that's held. The Leafs press with nine and a half minutes left. Toronto draws a power play. Tavares couldn't bury one in close. That power play gets killed off. McMahon is denied. Vasilevsky holds there. Chernak has a wraparound. that saved. Uh, Matthews with a fast break. That gets defended. Uh, points denied. Wool holds on there. We get two minutes of four on four with a minute and 44 seconds left. Uh, so yeah, it's three to one for Tampa Bay after the second period. Third period. Tavares has a rush chance. That's held. Uh, Domi has a net feed. That's blocked. Janot with a turnover chance that's saved. And then Janot had a fight with Reeves. Uh, Reeves, I would say, won the fight. And there you go. So Reeves, Reeves had a fight tonight and he was the one that was trying to get the crowd fired up. Kucherov's then denied on a break. The shots are 4-1 to for the Bolts at 4.5 minutes, so if that's what Reeves was trying to turn around with the fight, it just didn't work. Uh, Holmberg has a rush chance that's held. The Bolts press. They draw a power play. They cycle. Hedman has a shot that's held. Point has a shot that's saved. There's more cycling by Tampa. That's killed off. Domi to Bertuzzi near miss. The Leafs press with 8 minutes left. And at 14-19, Paul wires one from the far circle top corner. Radish with the assist. And then the Bolts gave Toronto nothing they gave them nothing after that for the rest of the game uh they end up winning this one four to one they go to 42 26 and seven with the win with the loss toronto 43 23 and nine shots on net 11 to 4 toronto in the first 14 to 10 toronto in the second 12 to 4 tampa in the third final shots 29 to 26 for toronto power plays tampa bay 0 for three toronto one for four hits 58 to 56 for toronto this felt like a playoff game. Vasilevsky saves 28 out of 29. Wall saves 22 out of 26. I'm just going to say it. I think between the two goalies in Toronto, I think Samsonov's just a little bit better right now. Not that it would have made a difference in this game. Tampa Bay was not going to be denied. All right. And the other game on this board, and I'm really glad I had two columns for both. 
Uh, it's Kakinen versus Shesterkin in this one. Two seconds. Two seconds in, it's a line brawl. Uh, so McDermott versus Rempe is your main event. And there are a chance for Rempe during this while all ten skaters pair off and play slap shot together. Uh, and so the entire lines are tossed from the game, minus the guys who started the whole thing. So since Lazar and VC were the first ones that fought, they went to the penalty box with your standard five minutes. Everybody else on the ice got a game misconduct, including for the Rangers, Truba and Keandre Miller. So they're short two of their better defensemen for the rest of the game. Ridiculous times put up. Luke Hughes had something like 32 minutes. Uh, I know it was over 31 minutes the last time that I saw it, but it, it's it's insane, the amount of ice time that the defenseman then had to play. Uh, so Devils get a power play in the first minute, back-to-back -back clears. Devils can't get set up. That power play's killed off, no shots. Mercer versus Cooley, so that's six fights. There's a lot of guys not on the bench at this point, because, sure. So, I mean, guys could have just stretched out and put their feet up on the bench, read newspaper. Newspaper's a thing we used to buy that had news in it. So, uh, instigator for Mercer, but it stays five on five because of all of the shenanigans going on at this point, meaning Mercer's gone for 17 minutes. Sure, yeah. Uh, actual shots on net are 1-1 one, one at five minutes, and five minutes in, we've already got 142 penalty minutes in this game. That's a lot. That's a lot of... <laughs> That's like 80s level. I might as well have put an 80s magnet on this or something. Um, I may have to introduce a magnet next year for when games have more than 100 minutes, minutes and penalties. I won't need it often, but it's definitely something that's noteworthy. So, uh, the Rangers press at five and a half minutes. Panarin scores. There's an offside challenge, but it counts. Uh, Panarin from Lafreniere and Fox at 922. That means the Rangers go to the power play. Uh, early clear, and again, the Devils do kill it. Both teams get rushes afterwards. The shots are 9-3 to three for the Rangers with seven minutes left. Roslovic has a shot that's juggled and held, and I change markers. Uh, we have a power play for New York. That's killed off as well. And then Lafreniere, pretty quickly after the power play's done, he scores from Wenberg and Roslovic at 18-03, burying a loose puck at the net. Lafreniere with a goal and an assist. He continues this really strong run he's been on. That's 15 points in 15 games now for Lafreniere. Uh, one minute left, the Devils get a power play, so that rolls over into the second period with the Rangers up 2-0. Uh, the Rangers prevent a setup. Uh, Heischer, or Hughes to Heischer gets picked off. That power play is killed off. But then at 2 minutes and 11 seconds, Palat scores from Jack Hughes and Luke Hughes. That's the eighth time that the Hughes brothers have combined on, a sit, on an assist. Rangers press to respond. The shots are two apiece at three and a half minutes. Panarin has a backhander. That's saved. Uh, Bratz robbed on a breakaway. There's some Igor chance there. The Devils press at eight minutes. At 9.53, Smith wires one from the slot. Uh, Bratt and Meyer with the assists, and that's where uh, Peter Laviolette decides, I'm calling a timeout. I got to talk this thing over. Well, whatever he talked about in the timeout doesn't work. At 11.24, New Jersey gets the lead. It's Heesher from Bratt. Really nice cross-ice pass and buried. Uh, it's suddenly 3-2 to two for the Devils. The Devils fighting for their lives. Anyways, uh, Panarin has a rush chance that's held. Wenberg has a slot shot that's held. The Devils draw a power play. Uh, there's a shorthanded chance for Fox that saved. That power play's killed off. Rangers press with a minute and a half left, but it's 3-2 to two for the Devils after two. Can they hold it? You know it's the Devils, right? So... Uh, Kako has a screenshot that's held. Jack Hughes is denied from the slot. Brat to Meyer near miss. And then Kako uh, buries one top corner on a rush. What happened is Luke Hughes' stick exploded. So at 531, uh, the Rangers tie it. Devils press to respond. The teams exchange rushes. The Rangers press at nine minutes. Fox has a screenshot that's saved. Uh, Luke Hughes has a shot that's held as the Devils get some pressure. We have a power play for the Rangers. Panarin fires one off of Kakinen's mask. That looked like that hurt. Uh, and then, when the play resumes at 15.03, Kreider, a perfect tip from the doorstep, gives the Rangers the lead. Fox and Panarin with the assists. Uh, the Rangers would press with three and a half minutes left. Trocek's denied on a rebound. The goalie pull happens with a minute and a half left. The Devils aren't able to tie this. They go to four. The final score is four to three for the Rangers. The Rangers go to 51, 21, and four. I believe the record for the Devils is 36, 36, and four now, I believe, with this loss. At any rate, the record's not up there. I know they're, they're, they're not making it. Uh, shots on net, 15-4 to four Rangers in the first, 11-8 Rangers in the second, 15-8 Rangers in the third. They outshoot New Jersey 41-20. to 20. Power plays 0-2 for, for New Jersey, or 0-3 for, for New Jersey, 1-3 for, for the Rangers. 
uh, hits 15 apiece. Kakinen saves 37 out of 41. Shesterkin saves 17 out of 20. This is the first time the Rangers have swept the Devils in a season series since 2014-2015 and only the third time uh, since the New Jersey Devils became the New Jersey Devils. At any rate, now I need to change boards. All right, board number two and uh, Edmonton and Dallas. This, you know, the funny thing is, I'm going to say this straight out as a Dallas fan. I think Edmonton deserved a better fate tonight. So it's Pickard versus Ottinger. The Rave jerseys being worn. Dallas's Dallas's record wearing the Rave jerseys getting a little better. Uh, Duchesne to Stankoven's a near miss, and then a 208 Fox uh, buries his own rebound at the net. Steele and Smith with the assists. It's one nothing Dallas early. The Oilers press at three and a half minutes. In fact, there's a post for CC as the Stars get pinned down. The shot's five to two for the Oilers at four and a half minutes. Nugent Hopkins has a rush chance that, that saved. The Stars get stuck at two shots for a while. Uh, then there's a press by Dallas at seven and a half minutes. That second shot was Fox's uh, goal, actually. Uh, Johnston's denied as the Stars press. Marchment misses one wide on a three on two. We have a power play for Dallas. Nurse gets an extra 10 minutes for beacon off about the call. So 10 minute misconduct. Uh, there's a shorthanded rush by Carrick. That saved. Power play's killed off. One shot on net. 358 left. The Oilers get a power play. And Dallas kills that off. They're up one nothing after one. But again, I thought the Oilers played really, really well. Just Jake Ottinger doing Ottinger things, getting ready for the playoffs, might bode well. Second period, Hints fires one wide on a rush. Stars draw a power play. That's killed off. The Oilers, they get a power play as well. Uh, there's a post for dry cycle while that's going on. That's killed off by Dallas. The Oilers press after it's done. The shots are six to five for the Stars at six and a half minutes. Uh, Oilers press at nine minutes. Nurse has a point shot. That's caught and held. Then we get a power play for Dallas, and they score on it. Uh, it's a cross-crease pass and, and buried. Great pass by Haskin, and Sagan buries it. Robertson with the other assist at 13-16. Johnson's then denied from the slot. The Oilers draw a power play. There was a shorthanded chance for Sagan that's held. That power play's killed off. And then the floodgates open at 16-27. Johnston wires one on a rush. That's 30. Uh, I believe he's the youngest Dallas star to ever score 30 goals in a season. Uh, Harley and, and Foxa with the assist there. Uh, McDavid's denied. The next chance he has is fired high. The puck goes the other way, and Ben scores. So it could have easily been a goal for the Oilers. It could have been a one-goal game, but instead, Ben makes it, or been a two-goal game. Ben makes it a four-goal game instead. Stankoven and Johnston with the assist at 18:42. And then, after a turnover in their own zone, and those turnovers were haunting the Oilers tonight, uh, Steele scores from Fox and Smith at 19:04. It's 5 nothing Dallas after the second period. I was absolutely floored. I, I don't know what happened in that last five, five minutes of, well, three and a half minutes of that third per second period, but it set up the third. Uh, Johnston fires one high from the slot. The shots are 2-1 to one for Dallas, four minutes in. Duchesne has a net feed that's picked off. I was impressed by the Stars forechecking up by five. Like I've talked about it before, how I do not understand how a team with a one-goal lead decides, eh, we're just going to sit back and, and just, just, you know, make sure we protect the net. Why? Have some confidence. Go out and do what you did that got you the lead. And the Stars, I thought, did a good job of doing that. There's a net feed to Hintz near miss. Shots are 4-2 to two for the Oilers with five and a half minutes left. With 5.17 left, the Oilers get a power play. It had chances, but it's killed off by Dallas. Yanmark then has a net drive that saved. The Stars win 5 nothing. So you get both the Tony the Tiger magnet and the No Mercy magnet at the bottom for your Cobra Kai. Uh, for the Oilers, they're 45-24-5 and five with the loss. With the win, Dallas 48-19-9. Gives them a good chance now to win the division uh, and maybe finish first in the West. Uh, the shots on net, 16-10 Edmonton in the first, 18-10 Dallas in the second, 9-4 Edmonton in the third. Final shots, 35-32 for the Oilers. Power plays the Oilers 0 for 4, Dallas 1 for 3. The hits 29 to 19 for the Oilers. Uh, Pickard saved 27 out of 32. I wouldn't put it on him. Uh, Ottinger saved all 35 for the shutout. Ottinger was fantastic. Uh, Dallas uh, played really well in that third period to shut it down. But I really felt like the Oilers, there were so many times tonight where I was like, man, they're going to get one here and then it could be a bunch. And just Dallas avoided that fate. All right, next up. Uh, L.A. and Seattle. So maybe one of the quieter games, although this was the quietest of the night. Grubauer versus Talbot. Good early back and forth. Teams trade tur turnovers. The shots are 2-0 for the Kings at 3.5 minutes. There's a post for McCann as the Kraken press. The Kings press at 7.5 minutes. We then get a power play for the Kings, and they score on it. It's Kempe from Arvidsson and Fiala at 9.24, and he buries that one on a good cycle. 
Uh, we get a power play for Seattle. That's killed off. The shots are only 5-3 to three for the Kings with six and a half minutes left. Seattle wouldn't get another shot before the period was out. Uh, both teams were doing a good job of blocking the middle of the ice. The Kraken press, they can't get to the net. Kopitar nearly adds one. The Kraken rush after that. There's a press by the Kings in the final minute. It's one nothing LA after one. Second period, early edge for the Kings. Wright fires one wide on a turnover. The Kraken press at three and a half minutes. Seattle draws a power play. That's killed off. The shots are four apiece, six minutes in. Kings press at seven minutes, and it's 7.39 after Seattle failed to clear the puck. Uh, Trevor Moore scores from Roy and Dubois. Uh, so Dubois had a big night. Roy had a big night. So did Moore. So there you go. Uh, Eberle has a rush chance. That's caught and held. There were only seven shots for Seattle 30 minutes into the game. So LA's got their lockdown game going. Uh, and at 11.49, Moore buries his own rebound. Dubois and Arvidsson with the assist. So Arvidsson with a couple of helpers tonight. Uh, Kings press with four and a half minutes left. With 2.09 left, LA gets a power play. That's killed off. It's 3-0 LA after two. And it looks like this one's done. But to Seattle's credit, they did fight back. Third period, early power play for the Kings. That's killed off. Larson and Laferriere were going to have a fight. And then the linesman jumped in the middle before very much happened. Uh, we get two minutes of four on four as a result. Uh, then we get a minute and 38 seconds of four on three. Uh, it's for the Kraken, and it's a four minute power play. So during that, we have a post for Bjorkstrand. And then just before the first two minutes is done, Burakovsky scores on the power play from Bjorkstrand and McCann at 539. Uh, the Kings do kill the second two minutes. Uh, they only allow one shot, even though Seattle called a timeout after that first power play goal and before the second power play got started. Uh, Cartier and Larson are then denied back-to-back. -back. The shots are 8-2 for Seattle at 9.5 minutes, but Fiala roofs, roofs one on a breakaway to put put them up by two yet again, or three yet again, I should say. Lazat with the assist at 10.45. And then Seattle answers almost immediately at 11.20. It's Dumoulin from Gord and Tanev, uh, but L.A. would answer yet again at 16.57 on a breakaway. Uh, Moore goes five-hole, and a great goal by Trevor Moore, hat-trick, and Dubois with the assist. So LA wins this one 5-2. to two. They go to 39, 25, and 11 with the much-needed victory. Seattle 31, 31, and 13. Of course, their, their season's basically done. Uh, shots on net, 7-3 LA in the first, 15-7 LA in the second, 13-5 Seattle in the third. Final shots, 27-23 for the Kings. Power plays, 1-4 for four for Seattle, 1-3 for three for LA. The hits, 25-16 for Seattle. Uh, Grubauer, 22 saves on 27 shots. Talbot, 21 saves on 23 shots. I don't know if you guys can hear the base of the car that's out at, at the road, but at any rate, I, I've, I've been hearing that a lot. You think, think a teenager just got a new car and, you know, you want to show the ladies, hey, look what I got. And it's not a great car either. That's the funny part. I just laugh at that one. It's not even really all that nice of a car. You're drawing attention to that. Anyways, uh, so, and then drives away. Uh, Vancouver and against the Arizona Coyotes tonight. This was not an exciting game, but uh, it still had some tension towards the end. So, and I'm going to say this too. I thought the Canucks played a really, really smart first 40 minutes. And maybe in that third period, because they played last night, maybe there's some fatigue taking over. So it's Seelobs versus Ingram. Good early flow. The Canucks press at two minutes. The shots are 2-0 Vancouver, five minutes in. Uh, Kraus has a one-timer that saved. These are the records I, that have that I had for the teams up there because I was doing the board for tomorrow's preview, so I need to make sure that was there so that I could update them here. Anyways, not like I have the app on my phone, right, to update the records. So, uh, Kraus has a one-timer that saved. It's one of those things that I do, and I know it's weird. Uh, the Coyotes press at six and a half minutes. I could fill a book with the weird. Uh, we get a power play for the Canucks. That's killed off. Mikheyev has a wraparound. that saved. Neither team with much room at this point in the game either. Uh, Valimaki has a shot that's held. The shots are 4-2 to two for Vancouver with five minutes left. Uh, the teams trade turnovers. The Canucks press with two minutes left. With one fifteen left, the Coyotes go to the power play. However, it's 0-0 zero, zero after one. Uh, second period, the Canucks finish the kill. The Coyotes press at two minutes. Mikheyev with a near miss on a net drive. I swear he's got to get a goal at some point and they tried they tried to get him that goal tonight he's, he's got to get one soon uh canucks press at five and a half minutes in fact the shots are eight nothing vancouver at seven minutes and the more shots they were getting the more nervous i was getting like eventually arizona's going to get some shots vancouver hasn't scored on any on any of theirs yet so we get a, a coyotes pressing at eight minutes then we get a power play for vancouver and they score on it quinn hughes with his third goal in two games 
Uh, wires it past the screen. Miller and Patterson with the assist at 9.41. Canucks go back to the power play. During the power play, we had a fight between McBain and Miller. Well, the Coyotes will take that because that takes Miller off the power play. And uh, Hoaglander tries to bank one in. Had a couple of attempts at the bank, in, bank shot and almost did. Uh, but that power play is killed off. The shots are 12-3 to Vancouver with six minutes left. Kessel rings tonight on a one-timer. Cooley hits the outside of the net as the Coyotes are pressing. It's only one nothing after two, even though the Canucks had outshot them 23-7. to So third period, uh, early press by the Coyotes. Cooley's denied on a rush. The shots are three apiece, three and a half minutes in. Besser has a rush chance that saved. The Coyotes press at four and a half minutes. Uh, Hughes has a blast that saved and held. Canucks are guilty of turning it over a lot in that third period too. And again, it, that might have been a fatigue thing. Uh, the Coyotes draw a power play. That's killed off. And then they draw another. And you can't give teams back-to-back -back power plays. Gunther scores from Kerfoot and Keller at 10:46, And then the Coyotes look for the lead. They could tell, you know, Canucks getting a little bit tired here. Uh, keep in mind what they did against the Nashville Predators not too long ago. Uh, shots are 9-6 to six for Arizona with 7.5 minutes left. The Coyotes press with 6 minutes left. The Canucks then press with 2.5 minutes left. And on Quinn Hughes bouncing it off the boards, Garland wires one into the back of the net. And I don't know if that was a set play, but I really hope it was. It was great. At 18.09, it's Garland from Hughes and Hronick. So Hronick with another helper. He started picking up points again. The goalie pull happens with a minute and 45 seconds left, and the Canucks just hang on. Uh, Seelovs really bailed him out during this game at points. The Canucks win 2-1. They go to 47-21-8. Uh, with that result and the Oilers' result, I believe they're now seven points clear of the Oilers. Uh, the Arizona Coyotes 31-39-5 with the loss. Shots on net, 7-3 Vancouver in the first, 16-4 Vancouver in the second, 16-10 Arizona in the third. Final shots are 33-23 for the Canucks. Power plays, both teams go 1-3. for three. The hits 44-32 for Vancouver. Silovs saves 22 out of 23. Ingram saves 31 out of 33 at the other end. So it was a nice goaltending matchup. I think Silovs has shown he might be ready to be a backup for the Canucks sooner rather than later. So maybe when this season's done, they move to Smith. Maybe Demko and Silovs becomes the tandem. Let me know your thoughts on that idea in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.